What's the darkest secret you found out about a family member slash relative? When I was a kid we went to my grandma's house every Sunday and all of my uncles and aunts would be there. One day I noticed that one of my uncles didn't show up anymore, so I asked my family where he is. They told me that he wouldn't be able to visit anymore because he moved away. Years later I found out that he raped and killed two women and they locked him up. Well, much like Reddington. They didn't technically lie. He did move away. Stepfather was cheating on mother. Didn't find out because he was caught cheating. Found out because he and his mistress were drunk. Got in a fight. And he punched her so hard that she fell over and died. Found out about the whole thing during the investigation. The trial. And the conviction. Was weird to have a lawyer want to call one two year old me to a stand. To defend the character of man I already had very little interaction and a fear of. And that was before the manslaughter charge. WTH why were you involved in the case at all? Did your mom not leave him? Why would she or you be a character witness for someone cheating on her? Well love and belief I guess interfered. And she wanted to believe he didn't have as much to do with it as he did. Went from lower middle class to struggling poor after that and never recovered. Positive note on this. My mom is fine now, and I'm too. And we have a wonderfully close relationship. Life just shits things out at ya, and you gotta keep going. What I learned from that experience was immeasurably rough at the realization of how cruel existence can be. But my mom and I are each other's biggest fans and even in the worst of times, we can pick each other up. My father tried to kill my mother while she was pregnant with me. Did he go to jail? No he did not. I found out about this when I was 20. My mom told me in private. She said back then my father had a drinking problem and he would get really violent sometimes. She said something to him one time, so he grabbed a knife, pushed her next to an open window, and put the knife at her throat. Made her choose between jumping from the fourth floor or get her throat slit. My mom said she cried and begged him to not kill her and think of the unborn baby, me. Some neighbors heard the noise and intervened. They managed to take the knife away from him. She was safe. Police didn't get involved. This was during communist times so back then apparently domestic issues like these were ignored. This was one of the times he was violent with her. My mom is religious and doesn't believe in divorce. They are still together after 45 years. His violent tendencies toned down after me and my brothers were old enough to knock him out if he tried that shit again. I'm the only one in my family besides my mom that knows this happened. I've always had problems with him, but I hated him bitterly after my mom told me what happened then and other times as well. I'm not a religious man, but I wish hell existed, just so he could rot in it. This sounds like my friend's family. They are not from my country, but they were here as expats. One day I found out that his family life was shit. Father molested my friend's sister and his mum used to cheat on the dad. This guy only loves his sister. He used to openly say he doesn't give a fuck about anything in the world. He'd even sell his mum out for a hot meal for his sister. Anyway. One night he comes home to screaming. Turns out his father was caught molesting his sister by his mum. And his mum started attacking him. So he beat her up. When my friend opened the door. He saw his mum and sister crying on the floor and his dad standing over them red in the face with I think it was a broom or something. A very average household appliance. He saw Ed and came to with his mum and sister, along with seven other neighbors all hanging to his limbs trying to pin him down. He's 6 feet 11 BTW. He beat his dad into the hospital. After the dad was discharged, he just walked out of their life. Came home and saw all his stuff gone. They don't know where he went. Two years ago I found out that my dad had a wife before my mom and she died in a freak accident on their wedding night. Edited, she was sleepwalking and fell to her death over the balcony, if anyone was wondering. That is devastating. Imagine having the best day of your life turn into the worst. Oh man. Your poor father. I know. I feel so bad for him. He slept through it and didn't find out until the cops arrived at his door. Now I understand why my dad always worshipped my mother and caters to her every whim because she can be a little bit of a handful. Also my mom said that when he introduced her to his old friends they were eerily extra super nice to her. My third cousin was going to be married next day. 
his fiance drowned. Can't imagine that load to bear the rest of his life. My father won't talk about it. I'm sorry about your cousin's loss. I found out that my grandfather's first wife, before my grandma, died of botulism from eating some tomatoes she had canned at home. She could have been saved. But he refused to take her to the doctor because the botulism was her fault. He let her die to teach her a lesson. Edit. They had two kids he left motherless. Guessing she didn't have a choice in whether or not to be the one responsible for canning her own food. Either. Exactly. A few years before he passed, my dad and I had a long heart to heart. At the end of which, he told me he wasn't the one to first sleep with my mom on their honeymoon. He caught her in bed with her cousin, with which she was, had been in love for a long time. He spoke with their pastor, who told him to forgive and forget. That worked. Until 6 years later, when he caught her again, with the same cousin. He told me he wanted to leave with me, but ultimately decided to stay. Because he wanted me to have a family. With all that happened in my childhood. And to him, workaholic, diabetes, heart attack. I wish he'd left and be happy instead. Well, at least you know he loved you very very much. I know. The years before he told me, he became increasingly passive aggressive with my mom and I would get angry at him. After that discussion, I didn't care at all. It was their relationship, not mine. I tried for a long time to heal it, help them through it, but it is not my duty as their child to do so. My wife helped me understand that it was their shit to figure out, not mine. Even though my mom doesn't know I know. Maybe dad would have had a happier life had he left, instead of focusing on work. There is strong debate in our family as to whether my aunt fell out of the window of her flat. Whether she jumped or was pushed, she survived, but with brain damage, and says she can't remember. Something similar happened to my grandma. She remarried after my grandpa died, and his family was crazy over how it would affect their inheritance. They lived in an old farmhouse that had a root cellar that could only be accessed along one side of the house. She was standing at the top of the concrete stairs and next thing she knew she was at the bottom. She has no memory of how it happened, and she still has trouble differentiating colors from her injuries. She suspects it was one of his kids, but we will probably never know. Not really dark at all, but surprising. My mild-mannered Buddhist lawyer uncle was international Mr. Leather's Leather Daddy's Boy of the Year sometime in the late 80s. Rock on Uncle Gary. My great uncle is a rapist that prefers underage family members. I don't know how many people actually know, but my grandparents certainly do along with his victims, my mom, aunt, and I know at least a few or their cousins, but I'm not sure which. But then he found Jesus again, so we all have to forgive him and pretend nothing happened. It was before I was born but that's the basic runaround I've gotten from my grandparents. They don't ever actually acknowledge it, just that Tony did bad things, but he found God. I eventually put two and two together about my mom's history or sexual assault and her making sure that me and my female cousins were never left alone with him. And now that I'm in my 20s, that duty has been passed down to me at every family gathering. It's like an unspoken rule that you can't say why. Just the warning. Don't leave your daughters alone with him. I'm tired of it though. Tired of shooing little girls away and having to pretend like it's normal. Scoping toddlers out of a predator's arms and acting like everything's fine and I'm just baby crazy. When this is all over, I'm not going to stay quiet anymore. The next time I have to around him, I'm taking children right back to their parents with the full fucking story of why it's dangerous. I'm tired of having to protect a rapist to keep peace. Why do you always take them away? Because you're a rapist. Tony. God isn't thrilled about that. By the way. Apostrophe.